sorry. So, <laughs> hi again to everyone. Um, today we'll just be go going over uh the basics of a, a new cake mail account. Uh, we'll be going over the the branding, the templates, uh, the importing of contacts, and uh, all the. We'll do a, a little highlight of all the different sections in uh, the cake mail account. For those who don't know me, my name's Alex. I'm the director of customer success at Cake Mail. And without further ado, we'll just proceed to the demo of the account. So when I log in for the first time in my new account, I'll see my dashboard like this, asking me to complete goals. If you're already an existing account of Cake Mail, uh, to use the new version, you can use your existing credentials and login and password remains the same. And once you log in, uh, all your uh, campaigns, your templates, your lists will all be automatically um, in the account already, as well as all your previous statistics on your campaigns. But the first time you'll log into your account, you'll have to do this like the new users as well. So you'll go in the settings and you'll go into your account settings um, where you'll be able to uh, set or modify your uh, address if it hasn't uh, been done before. You have here, you have the user section where you're able to add or give access to multiple uh, people if ever they would need to access the account. And then finally, uh, this is something new that was added, uh, which is called the senders. So uh, a sender needs to be confirmed before you can use it when sending an email with the new Cake Mail platform. Uh, so it's very simple. You just click here to add sender and you'll put in your um, the sender name and the sender email. Once that's added, the, the sender will receive an email and you'll have to click on the confirmation link to uh, approve it. If you notice here, we have a, a little bar on top with the domain name. If it's green with a check mark, it means you're authenticated properly. If it's uh, more of a orangey color with an X on it, uh, in that case, it means you can click here on the authenticate domain section. And this is where we'll provide you um, the information or instructions to authenticate your domain. Uh, it's not mandatory, but it's highly recommended uh, and almost becoming mandatory today if you're you're sending uh, newsletters to a larger volume of people. Um, it's obviously going to be very beneficial for you in terms of uh, deliverability, making sure you don't hit the spam box and really uh, making it to the inbox for your clients to maximize the interactions with your newsletter. Uh, once that's done and it's confirmed, you can validate it and as I mentioned, once it's set up correctly, you'll have this green check mark, so you're good to go. If we follow up with the rest that we have in the account here, uh, we have the suppression list, and essentially a suppression list is uh, when a person uh, marks your email as spam uh, when receiving it to uh, uh, an email service provider such as Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, etc. cetera. Um, the person will get added from here and you'll be able to see it in the source as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. And from here, uh, once a person is in a suppression list, it's also a safety mechanism for you. So as many times as you try to import them in a list, even if they're in a list, uh, the system will never send to them. So uh, keeping you uh, obviously safe or uh, safe from mistakes as well. And finally, we now added the export tab in your Cake Mail account. So uh, this is essentially a place where you have all the logs of the exports that were done. So if someone exports a list, exports a segment, or exports uh, campaign reports, um, you'll be able to download them from this page for a limited time. And you'll also know which user and what that user exported. So again, another security feature uh, that we have here. Uh, moving on to uh, other sections in the account settings, we now have something that's called a brand. So a brand also is going to allow you to uh, customize a little more certain landing pages or confirmation pages. Uh, so from here, you'll be able to uh, add your logo, uh, 
change the, the, the text color, the button and the background color. If we go ahead here in the, in the preview, you can also see um, what that's going to look like. Same thing for the opt-in emails. So when you're sending out or, or someone subscribes to a form, uh, again, you're able to uh, add your logo here. And uh, again, kind of like the last time, the buttons, the links, the paragraph and all that stuff, you're able to play around and kind of at least make it match your branding. And finally, we now introduced a new feature, Kickmail, that's called a smart template. So when uh, you fill out this section of the brand for your smart template, uh, and you're, you're using that in the editor, uh, every time you'll be dragging and dropping uh, a certain section or buttons, uh, everything here uh, that's been set over here will reflect uh, in the in the drag and drop editor. So, uh, for example, if you have again in the case that we have multiple users in a, in an account, we want to stay on brand. When I drag in my button, if I have a particular red that I use for my company, we can make sure that every time we drag it in, it's always the right shade of red that's there. Okay. So we'll start with the contacts to begin. Uh, the contact section, uh, as I mentioned, if you already had an existing account, your contact list will be here. You'll be able to access them via this dropdown for the list. And the second dropdown will be your segments or your groups uh, that they were previously called in the last um, version. If we want to import, we can click on the little plus here and choose to either import your contacts uh, via CSV file or add a contact manually if we just wanna add one at a time. If today I choose to import my contacts, I now have the option to import in an existing list or by creating a new one, uh, import into a new one by cl clicking on add new here. So for today, we'll just keep it to existing list. And uh, finally, I can choose to import either a CSV file or copy paste from a Google spreadsheet. In my case, I have a CSV file that I can go here and get on my desktop. And I'll go ahead and now it, the system prepares me a preview with all the four fields that I had in my list. So if I have four different fields, they automatically get imported. If I don't wanna import some of these, I can just uncheck them right here or recheck them if I want to use them all. If I need to modify or customize the name of the field, I could go and modify it right here. And I can also choose the type of value that I'm importing. So am I importing a text value? Am I importing a date or a number? Um, and this is obviously useful in the future if you're trying to uh, accomplish different things in the CakeMail platform. For example, use, uh, I don't know, um, system um, automations based on a date. Uh, it's obvious that this field is going to be important, that it's a date field and not a text. So once that's done, I'm satisfied with everything. I can just go ahead here and save and continue my import. I can confirm that obviously I have the full permission. And then once that's done, I can see my contacts were imported into my list. And if ever I was importing and I had, for example, either empty lines or uh, an email address that doesn't have, is missing the dot to dot com or there's missing the, uh, the at sign, uh, we would have here a report saying which line of my Excel spreadsheet is having issues. And I could go back to my sheet and make the corrections and re-import the missing contacts that had the mistake. So I'm done with my import. I'm now in my list. I can click on a user and view his profile. So we have a first page here that shows you the details, the details where you'll see the history of a user. So you'll see how many emails he received ever since he's been subscribed to the list, the opens, uh, the clicks, as well as if he has any tags assigned to him or any interest, which is 
a new feature that we added in the next gen version that we'll go over very shortly. And we also have the activity where we'll be able to see uh, what's happened since he's subscribed to the list. So if he opened, if he clicked, and the whole history since he's he's in there. Okay. Now we were uh, we were talking about uh, new features that were tags and interests. So we'll begin with the interest feature. So we'll just go here into our list settings. In the list settings, the first tab is our attributes, so our fields uh, that exist in uh, the list. And here we have the interest. So in the interest, uh, I'm able to add different fields. Uh, for example, uh, in, in this case, I took the example of two different cities. So the city of Montreal and the city of Laval. Uh, and from there, I can see now that if I preview what my landing page is going to look like, I can see that I can subscribe and unsubscribe from these preferences. I can also unsubscribe from the list as a whole by clicking on this unsubscribe button right here. And as we mentioned in the branding section, by setting a brand, we're also able to control uh, the button colors, the background and the text color as well if we wanted to uh, maybe have it match a little more our brand. Okay, moving forward, we got our list settings. So on my list settings, I'm able to set a default sender. So a default sender is going to be the, the, the sender email when I subscribe to a subscription form. So if I subscribe, I'm going to receive an email and this is the from it comes to. Uh, if not, I can add them in my sender section and just choose my drop down and select the one that I'm looking um, for uh, to do. Then again, we have the default language. So the default language is also going to reflect on all your um, uh, unsubscribe pages and uh, things like that. So if you want to set a language for those pages by default, so if it's English, obviously, or uh, if it's another language, then you can select the, the, the drop down and choose the language that matches um, your needs. And finally, we have personalized landing pages. So personalized landing pages, uh, if you want to, again, uh, go a little beyond uh, the customization that we offer on certain landing pages, then you're able to uh, create that page on your website and add the URL. So uh, our system will redirect to your website directly and you'll have your, uh, your own personalized uh, page. So it can be done for these three options below. Okay. And... If we go back to our list here, so uh, the second feature we spoke about was tagging. So if I select a contact, I'm able to uh, add or remove a tag on a user. So for example, if I want to tag, I can create or find an existing tag. And right now in my account, I had created a tag called VIP, so I could actually tag this for this person as a VIP and we see it updated here, but it could have been um, also we could have uh, tagged them, uh, let's say uh, uh, piano. If this person likes uh, the piano, then we can maybe tag him piano. And so we see he's the VIP, but he's also a piano enthusiast. So uh, he'll receive, or it's gonna help us better segment our list to uh, send more personalized messages to this um, user. So when I'm done, I can click done. I have my tags in my list, my interests are there. I can go on this left-hand side here and create a segment. So if ever I wanted to create a particular segment, I'm able to create it based on uh, all the fields that exist in the list. It could be done with the email activity, with the opens the or the non-openers and the, the the links as well, if you click or didn't click, but we can also do it on tags like we did or the interest like we, we saw a little before that as well. And finally, also with the custom attributes that are in my list. Uh, for today, we can go and just create one with a tag. So if this person has the tag, for example, uh, VIP, uh, let's add them to the list. So we can see here that the system recognized that uh, two contacts were uh, matched 
that condition. So it added it in my group, in my group. But if I would have maybe replaced that with tags as piano, we can see now it gets changes and only uh, one person matches that condition. So I can go ahead and create my group. And every time I go back into my list and I want to add someone quickly to the to the piano group, I can just you know select and go tag quickly and put the piano there. So that's it for the uh, the audience part. Uh, just a quick overview of, of how that, that was working. Uh, we'll now uh, proceed to the forms because we saw uh, how to import a list. We saw that we could uh, connect a list to a form, but now let's go create a new little form. So we'll create, for example, our test form and we'll assign it to our cake mail mailing list. I have the option here to select a policy. So either a double opt-in or a single opt-in. We obviously recommend always using the double opt-in. You can avoid errors, typos, uh, robots, although we have the captures in place to avoid those. It can also be uh, someone that, you know, uh, just wants to spam you or have uh, fun. Uh, so adding this in, uh, adding this in place, will normally filter all those out. So once my form is created, I now have two options. I have what uh, we call a linked form or I have uh, an embedded form. So a linked form is a form that's hosted by CakeMail. You simply need to here uh, copy the URL and uh, the form is functional uh, just as long as you provide that URL. And the second one is the embedded form. So the embedded form is we provide you with an HTML code that you add on your client's website or on your website and uh, that you, you'll be able to um, connect that list to the form on the website. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, you have here uh, the editor for the form. So you're able to drag and drop from the, the, the right side, if you want to customize your editor, that's something new that we added as well. So if I want to add more attributes or more fields, as we say, into the 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 subscription form, we'll have here the drop down with all the filters in my list, all the attributes in my list, and I can add them there by default. So uh, I can do that and make them uh, match and then save them and save my form. And there you go. My form is now updated with my two fields. Um, uh, from here, once we're we're happy, as I mentioned, you either use that that URL or you as the add the HTML code to your website, and that's it. If you have already an existing form uh, that's linked from the previous version of CakeMail, uh, please note that these will still be functional, so you don't need to update them. Uh, they're still connected to your list and you'll still be getting signups to your list as well. Moving forward to uh, the contact section. So uh, the campaign section where we'll be creating our our templates and all that. So we were talking about uh, the, the templates that we offer now. We have about 800 new and responsive templates. So you have a list here uh going down uh, a few of them that we had added over the last uh, maybe two or so a bit more years uh, and here you have a filter that you could filter by uh, type industry and you'll be able to search uh, for uh, today's sake we'll be uh, starting from scratch and uh, we'll be creating our template um, based on the layout that we we wanted on, on the look that we wanted if we had one in particular. So um, when it comes to the drag and drop, there's the concept of rows and content. And I always recommend starting with the rows first. So if, for example, I'll create a first row uh, and you can control from there if we want one section, two section or three sections. So we'll try to alternate here just to, to show what uh, the render turns uh, our newsletter into. Uh, so we'll go and we'll add also some, uh, maybe some three sections, and then we'll finalize with a one section as well. Okay. So I have kind of the layout I wanted to create for my newsletter. 
I now have uh, my my sections up here, so uh, my content. So I'll go drag my content into the blocks where I wanted my my space to be. So I have I want to start, let's say, with an image, and then we'll be adding, for example, a title. Then we'll add some text, and maybe in the same box we'll also add uh, a button. And then we'll we'll go ahead and we'll just fill out these blocks with the content and then we'll go back and then we'll we'll personalize and we'll get it to exactly um, to add the information that we wanted in there directly. So as we keep going here, we can see adding a paragraph and maybe, you know what, we put like a little social media at the bottom. All right, so again, uh, two concepts when it comes to editing. The first one, as you can see, when I place my cursor outside the box, a row gets highlighted, and when I click on it, a set of properties will show up to customize this row. And secondly, when I click on the content block itself, I'm going to have a, a set uh, of properties for this content block in particular only. So if you see here, the first one I clicked, it was on the image. So I have some options here on the right for the image. But if I click on text, I'll have a different set of properties, as you can see. Same thing when I click on the button, et cetera, et cetera. So it's always gonna be different and we'll try to go over these uh, just quickly showing you what they do. So we have our image, our image library. We can upload straight from a file we have on our computer or we can import uh, via URL, Facebook, uh, uh, Google Drive, et cetera. Or we also have a free photos library that you can use with the search. We had, there's about 500,000 stock photos that you can select from uh, to fill out some content if sometimes you didn't have that right picture uh, to fill out your newsletter. So today I just chose my, my header of my email. I want to send out a newsletter. I have a little restaurant, so I'm happy with this. Uh, if, I, if I clicked on this, uh, on this side right now, um, I can add also uh, a URL here that links uh, to my website uh, and I can also select what happens here. So if I wanted to send an email or dial the the phone number of my restaurant, I can set that right here. Um, with my titles, I'm able to choose the the different heights, the, the, the different sizes. So if I want H2, H, H3 or H1, then we'll see the little difference that happens there. Font families, etc. the colors, here we have alignment, and there's many options that we could play with, even up to the letter spacing. So the bigger I make it, the more I have spacing. So helping us really go get that look we want to get for our newsletter. Then finally, I have my button. So my call to action, if I want to send someone a download our, our menu or view our menu, click here. So it could have been, you know, view our menu. Uh, we could also uh, use this new button that we added which is uh, the artificial intelligence that can help you with the content creation. Uh, the AI is available on the button blocks, on the paragraph blocks to help you write really the, the body of your email, but also uh, available on the subject lines as well. So again, here we go. We'll just keep playing with certain options. Uh, we could see here, for example, I wanna play with the content area uh, background color. So if I want to set a little, you know, maybe a little light gray here. And uh, if I wanted to, I have another option here for the row background. So if I change the row background, we're going to see that we're kind of like highlighting my section here and the middle color is different. So kind of creating a different design. So that's possible as well. And there's, as you explore, uh, I won't go through all of them, but as you explore, um, these these options on the right side, you'll you'll see you're able to customize, uh, make sections uh, or borders rounder or more square or add spacing. Uh, basically, this this new editor is really gonna make it simple for you to create the look that you're trying to get, as well as being able to hide certain sections on mobile or on desktop, and adding things like conditions. So, for example, here a little condition could have been. Uh, Let's say I have a restaurant and uh, I'm, a, I'm a pasta lover, but I don't like meat. 
what I could have done here is I could have duplicated my block and uh, I could have assigned a condition to uh, this section, uh, leveraging our uh, knowledge base and also the information I have in my list. I can put if if in my pref food preferences in my list I would have imported would have been uh, pasta. I could have put if I like pasta, uh, select this block or if I like uh, meat, select this block. So when my newsletter goes out, the person who had pasta in his food preference field would only see this block rather than this one and vice versa for uh, the person who was going more for something like meat. So uh, this is a bit more advanced. We're going to see it uh, maybe in another uh, webinar when we do a bit a more of a deep dive into uh, conditional formatting and all that. Um, so that's for th this section uh, right here. And I'll just add one here. We, we create uh, basically uh, some for the languages by default. So if you speak English or if you speak French, it goes um, around the same lines of what I was explaining, but in a different case here with the languages. Okay, so I'm happy with my little section. Oh, maybe, you know what, let me upload, uh, I don't know, a little, uh, a little picture here of a pasta dish. All right, okay, I'm good. So I have my little section with my with my pasta and I can just move forward. Uh, again, here quickly, we can highlight the content area and go select our look. Then we have our images like we said, and we have a social media block at the bottom where I can uh, either um, add or delete the social medias that I use. I can select the styling of that social media I can add the links, obviously, very important to redirect them towards my my pages. So if I only have uh, Facebook and Twitter, or if there's other ones, uh, we have uh, pretty much all of them. And if ever they wouldn't exist, one that's one exists and it's not in this list, you have the possibility to add a custom icon and then import your own image. For example, if you had your own app, then you'd be able to uh, use something like this to customize it. Then we have our the footer that gets added automatically, very important. Uh, the client's address tag goes to leverage uh, the information that you put in on your profile page for your, your address and obviously the, un the unsubscribe that's mandatory when you send. Um, other features on rows uh, are, for example, a saved row. So for example, if we're multiple people in an account or I'm always starting from scratch, I could use the saved rows functionality. So I can go ahead and save that, uh, oops, save what I was doing. Uh, just one second, I'm not sure what. We had a little, we had a little issue here in my, in my account, um, essentially, the the what the saved rows feature is going to do is it's going to uh, allow you to choose or select from a library of rows that you'll select. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, save any of these, and I would go back, let's say in the rows here, you'll have a drop down that has my saved rows and Let's say I, I would have had here, I had a previously saved rows. I would be able to drag drag it in and reuse the ones that I've created. If not, another way is also uh, keeping, once you're happy with the structure of your template, if it doesn't change, every time you send a campaign, you're able to duplicate, uh, duplicate your campaign and be able to reuse it uh, in, the, in the future and just go ahead and change uh, the information I put in my, in my template as well as the images. So if we're here and you know we're finally, for example, we're here, I'm satisfied with the with the the, the look of my my newsletter. We're good to go. I can finally click here. I can send myself a test email. I can save my design as a template if I want to reuse it. I can also activate smart branding. So when I activate smart branding, 
uh, going back, if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, uh, what we did, uh, what we we could have done was set a color to my my brand. So my color on my buttons, my color on my text, color for the the background. So if I I would were to activate it, uh, then uh, my brand would have been applied. And there you go, my button as you seen uh, when I created my newsletter, it was blue, but in my branding page, uh, my button colors were black and my text. Uh, was uh, white for the buttons. Uh, so we see here that my brand got applied and every time that I'll, I'll want to add some content to my uh, newsletter, well, then it's gonna reflect my brand and I can save it, as, actually, I can actually uh, save it as is. So next time I'll even be able to uh, go back and, and reuse this as a smart template. And as you see now, when we re-clicked on the dropdown, other option appears, so uh, the section to go manage your brand directly and uh, the possibility also to deactivate the smart branding if ever uh, it's not what you uh, wished for. So my newsletter is done. I'm happy with what we got. Continue. And here I can go uh, give a name to my campaign. So let's say my first campaign. I can add a subject line. If I'm unsure of what kind of subject line I wanna add, we can go and generate that subject line with AI. So obviously not much content was in there. So this is what was uh, recommended by the AI. Every time I re-click on it, it's gonna generate three new subject lines. Uh, secondly on the list, we have uh, the cake mail uh, mailing list, which was my mailing list in the account. So I have the drop down. It's the only list I had. I can select it. And finally, I can choose to either send to an interest or I can choose to select. If I don't put anything, we're sending to the full list. We can do an interest only or maybe a segment only. So before we saw, we created the segment piano. So I want to send to piano or for example, you know what? I want to send to my VIPs and piano. So both of them are in this list and we'll be sending out to them. Then I have my from email. From email going out. I can choose my sender name if I if ever I need to change it. And this is my sender email where uh, I had in my, my senders my email. If I added more, there would have been more to select from. If I have different types of campaigns that need to use a different sender. Uh, moving forward, we can send either the campaign as soon as possible, or we can specify a specific time to send if I need to, if I'm ready and I just want to schedule it for next Monday, for example, we can go here in the drop down and go get our date that we want. Finally, we have the UTM parameters if we want to add them to a, to our, our campaign. So if I'm using, uh, for example, uh, Google Analytics or any other analytics uh, system, I can do a little uh, follow-up of my email marketing campaign by adding my parameters right here. And then we're good to go to send out our campaign. So that gets sent out. Uh, that's just a quick highlight and overview for the campaign section. As I mentioned, we're gonna have other webinars that are gonna do a bit more of a deep dive and we'll go and create examples of what a nice campaign can look like to give you ideas. Uh, I'll show you some other functionalities functionalities before we uh, wrap this up. So we'll proceed with the AB split. So if I create an AB split here, obviously it's a premium feature. So you'll need a premium sub subscription if you wanna use this. And if I name it, for example, we'll give it a little name, we'll select my list. And once we hit continue, we'll have our little um, grid here that really shows us uh, how to do the breakdown. So if I click on my AB split test, so we're determining the the con the conditions to uh, run this AB test. So we want to test the distribution. So while we test, meaning if I put 20%, it means 10% are gonna receive version A and 10% are gonna receive version B, and the winner is gonna receive 80%. Um, 
here we have a condition. So if if no significant winner was determined, we we can just put an arbitrary uh, test date where we uh, we end the test date. Sorry, and uh, from here we can select which version that we we choose to to send uh, by default. Um, when you're here. And you're choosing and you're you're editing your your emails. Uh, it's important for me, and uh, we always recommend uh, changing one variable when you're you're doing a b a b split. So whether it's the subject line, whether it's a button color, whether it's where we're placing a header or a certain image or a call to action, we always change one variable per a b split, which is going to really allow us to identify uh, where the problem not the problem or where, which part that we changed makes our newsletter more successful. So that generates more interactions with our audience. Uh, and last little thing uh, that's, that's new here is uh, you're obviously able to see uh, the reporting of each version. So now if you click on the overview, you'll see the open rates, the click rates on each version, as well as the winning version that's gonna be added uh, around here once that uh, a clear winner had, has been determined. And last but not least, we have our uh, new automation functionalities that will also uh, require a premium su subscription if you're using uh, what we call the advanced automations. Um, so again, we'll have a webinar spe specific on this as it's a whole other uh, thing in itself, but uh, just to give you an idea, you can create a flow, uh, for example, after someone subscribes to a list. So for example, I just linked my automation to a subscription list. So when I sign up, I can decide what happens. So I can say, okay, add a delay of one second. And after one second, we can send, for example, a welcome email where here I'll be able obviously to edit, change my my, my template, and I also have the possibility, like we just saw in the AB split, to see all the stats on the step. But we can prolong this uh, little flow and we can keep going. So I would be able to add a delay, but this time maybe of one week after the subscription and then say, oh, well, let's send them another email. So this typical uh, kind of flow is what we call uh, more of a drip campaign. So it's included also in the growth plan. So you can obviously use this and leverage this. And now we'll just explore quickly uh, some other features that are considered a bit more uh, premium, for example, like the if else. So now we're using conditional automations, which means an action, for example, has been done for the system to take a decision for you. In this case, we, we could say if the person didn't open our, our, our untitled campaign right here, well, then we can say, oh, well, put a delay and uh, let's say uh, one week later, we send them another email. If it did open, we could end the flow. We won't bother him anymore. So that could be one, one easy way to explain it, what's going on. Um, we also have path splits on automations. So a path split on automation is essentially an A-B split of an automation floor, uh, flow. Sorry, And again here, as we mentioned, always working with one change, one variable, one flow. So we have a path here that can say, okay, let's delay the email from one week. And maybe the second path here that we can say, let's delay the email from two weeks. And then we can compare and obviously when, when we'll click on those emails, we'll have our overview with our results. And from there, we could compare our results and see, you know, which frequency is working better than the other, for example. And uh, finally, on the action side, so uh, we saw the send test, uh, the send email, sorry. Uh, we also have a feature that's called looping. So essentially what looping does is it goes back. Once you get to the loop, it goes back to a certain step that you can send it back. So we can send it back to this 
or we could send it back at the beginning of the flow, for example. Uh, but in this case today, uh, we, we would be able to, um, uh, we'll just leave it on, on this one. Uh, and we're able to uh, either loop for a specific number of times, or it could be done continuously. Uh, a good example of looping would be, uh, for example, if you have a subscription, uh, an, an annual subscription. So you can say, let's loop continuously. And once we get to the loop stage, you know, set a delay for 52 weeks or whatever. And once that's done, we it, it goes back continuously in our flow and the person's gonna receive those, uh, for example, subscription reminder or whatever you wanna use those for. Last but not least, in the actions, we have uh, two uh, options that are quite similar, really. It, it depends the way you work. So uh, when a person makes it to a, a certain step, we can either update a custom attribute. So uh, add a value in a field or tag or untag a, uh, a user if he makes it to this flow. So for example, uh, in this case here, uh, if the person would have made it uh, on the 50-50 the side, I could have maybe, I don't know, I could have tagged them uh, VIP if you make it to this side and if you make it to this side, well, your uh, piano. But actually, this should have been um, really a conditional. So instead of a pad split, it should have been a conditional if he opens or if he doesn't open. Uh, one would have been VIP and one would have been maybe non-VIP, for example. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we'll have uh, plenty of time to uh, go over this more in detail because this is uh, a, another uh, big subject and obviously a very interesting one uh, in which we uh, we also highly believe that uh, we will... Uh, it's certainly something that's going to grow over time and people are going to use and it's going to help you uh, to better leverage your time. But that'll be for another time. Uh, so that's um, that's it for the, the, the quick uh, five steps demo. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. And uh, now I'm open uh, to any questions. If anybody has, just feel free to add them in the chat.